they say that it's xenophobic, what I am saying. So why is it illegal for a Christian to go to Mecca? Uh, also very aggressive. If when he stepped on my stool and I told him, can you get on my stool? All right. And he punched me. Okay. Prove it! I will prove it! Hey, hey, ladies and gentlemen! Ladies and gentlemen! Hey, it's mine, man! Oh, 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 they get a bit pushy! They get a bit pushy! Yeah, get a bit pushy! So, for example, when I come here to speak, I don't push people. We Muslims! Oh, no, 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 I would got between these two. Oh. This gentleman went to stand on here and he pushed him oh, to move thank you. this away. I was here. This is a place for debate, yeah. not pushing, not there are men there who were shouting over him and it got very heated. But I got in between them. Okay. Now the things to uh, listen to me. Good to see you. Life treating you well. You've been waiting for. You've been waiting for me. This is the guy I've been waiting for. This is the master. Shall I wrap this up? We're getting angry. Yeah. So before I be, let me just finish with him. No, let me. I know. I know. I know. Our police. Here, he's good. Uh, there seems to be a gathering cloud around Asif. It's always like this first thing in the morning, isn't it? Yeah. First thing. <laughs> right then, are we ready? Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen. What I'd like to talk about today is the dispute that's arraigned, that's erupted between the Archbishop of Canterbury and Priti Patel with regards to the migrant and refugee crisis that we've got and that has developed across the world and across the English Channel. Just recently, the Archbishop of Canterbury used his Easter speech to say that the policy being enacted by the Conservative government in the UK was not of God and was godless, that it was an affront to God, that it was against God. To take refugees and migrants who are coming across on dinghies and boats, to transfer them to Rwanda to be processed as part of a way of processing these migrants and refugees. Now I want to say that the level of naivety demonstrated by the Archbishop of Canterbury is a worry and a concern for Christians. We have a refugee and a migrant crisis that is being driven by a number of factors. Most of them are outside of the control of the British government. Failing economies, war, famine, ecological disaster, failing states are driving a migrant and refugee crisis. And taking advantage of that are criminal gangs who are willing to take thousands of pounds to take these migrants and refugees illegally and dangerously across borders. Many of them dying en route and the idea that the EU, the UN and the British government should simply facilitate this kind of abuse of human beings, abuse of human trafficking by becoming the facilitators, by becoming those who help to make that journey possible, to help that economy to prosper is dangerous to those refugees and those migrants. The British government 
is imitating Australia, who, when it was faced with a similar problem, took migrants and refugees to an island to be processed. And overnight, the criminal gangs lost their grip upon an economy. The way to solve the migrant and the refugee crisis is not to become the collaborators with those criminal gangs and to help sustain the economy that they have built. The way to deal with those criminal gangs that are taking advantage of desperate and vulnerable people is to destroy the economy that they have created. And so, whilst it is not necessarily the most ideal solution, immediately deporting refugees and migrants to Rwanda to process them there is a better solution than simply picking up the migrants and bringing them to the UK, which is exactly what the migrants and refugees want and exactly what the criminal gangs have promised to achieve. And so, by refusing them entry and stay into the UK, but by immediately removing them from the United Kingdom, you deny the economy that is driving the, the trade of human beings. Now, why did the Archbishop, in his infinite ignorance, in his infinite naivete, go and articulate a condemnation of a well thought out policy? to argue for the status quo. He did it because the bishops of the Church of England are utterly irrelevant to public discourse. And in a desperate bid to try and make themselves relevant to a society, they are hooking themselves onto a left-wing political narrative in the hope that by echoing the progressive echo chamber, they can seem relevant to public debate. But the reality is, the fact that the Archbishop is unable to articulate a Christian answer with a Christian dynamic to this very question is a symbol of the irrelevance of the bishops of the established Church of England. And what we need, ladies and gentlemen, are not virtue signalling bishops trying to make themselves look relevant by jumping on to any old bandwagon as they currently do, but bishops who can speak from an authentic Christian worldview. So allow me to try and offer to you today a critique of the bishop and a solution to this question that is rooted in the Christian faith. The first thing that we must do as Christians is not become collaborators with sin which is currently what the EU is doing and what the British government has been doing when they have helped the human traffickers to achieve the goals of their economy and thus helped to fund and sustain human trafficking and thus helped to fund an economy leaving tens of thousands dead on the way. Our solution cannot collaborate with that economy. We must deny its end. And by denying its end, make that economy futile. And when that economy is futile, then people will recognize 
that there is no point paying thousands of pounds to human traffickers who will endanger their lives because the promise that is being given by those human traffickers is an evidently false one. And so we must create our own means of entering our country legally and safely available to those that want to enter in. So we don't just abandon people, but we treat them with compassion. But that means that we are the ones who are choosing who enters our country, who joins our society. And the Christian worldview does not believe that you should just allow everyone to walk in without asking the question, what are they bringing with them? What will they contribute to our society? It is a politically incorrect fact, but is it a fact nonetheless to state that not every migrant and not every refugee is equal in what they will contribute to our society. Don't believe me. Think I'm lying. Well, go and look at the ram it down riots that have happened in Sweden just recently. Do you think that the Muslims rioting in Sweden against freedom of expression, against legal political discourse in a democracy has contributed well to Swedish society. Anyone with a brain can recognize the answer is no. Do you believe that the descendants of the immigrants who have filled the northern towns in England who have raped tens of thousands of white working class girls have contributed well to our society. No, of course not. We must have an immigration and refugee policy that decides that those who come into our society Islam will contribute well we to our free. civilization and society. Now notice yeah. the We're ignorant troll no nationalism in jumps on the idea yeah. of yeah. racism Black, white, uh, and he brown, jumps on the idea yeah. of nationalism but he ignored but he ignored the fact that I stated we should create a safe and legal way for refugees and migrants who will contribute well to our society to join it Everyone should be free to come, Bob. Now, why, why yeah, yeah. ladies and away? gentlemen, why, are you such a nationalist? Is the political class such of our racist. society yeah. so wedded of unfiltered and uncensored migration? All people are created I will equal. tell you why. why Bob? I'll tell you why. Why? why? Bob. Why do you use a pseudonym? It is because, ladies and gentlemen, this guy they are wedded to a political religion called multiculturalism. Bob. It's a pseudonym. We have made a god of a political idea to tell people of multiculturalism really that coward, states that I mean, this John? Muslim, yeah. John? whose religion like teaches yeah. that Christians and Jews yeah. should be made second-class citizens, Ooh. is equal to the Christian faith right, so that you, says that the foreigner is, should be treated equal under the law. The yeah, we Christians 
Do not believe in the idea of relativism. We don't believe that all values are the same. That all values teach the same. And so we condemn Islam that teaches that if a Muslim wants to become a Christian, you should kill them. We condemn Islam that teaches that the witness of a woman in court is half that of a man. We condemn Islam that teaches the value of a Jew or a Christian legally in law is half that of the value of a Muslim. They obfuscate and they lie about their religion because they know you are ignorant of their religion. And they know that you have been indoctrinated to believe that all religions and all values and all cultures are equally valid. So let I say that that is a lie. Cultures that feed here, that mutilate the genitals away. of females are not equal to cultures that do not mutilate the genitals of females. Cultures that teach a man can marry four women, but a more woman can't marry four men, are not equal. One is better than the other. No, ladies and gentlemen, they say that it's xenophobic. What I am saying. So why is it illegal for a Christian to go to Mecca? Why is it illegal for a Christian to go to Medina? Why is it illegal for someone to be a citizen and a Christian in Saudi Arabia? Why isn't he calling that xenophobia? Treason! Treason! There you go! You heard it from his own mouth! Treason! So they say to us that if we censor and filter based upon values, it is Islamophobia. But when they want to do it to us, they say you should accept it. That's all you are. They called it treason. He called it treason. And he called me a liar for him calling it treason. So who's right? This Muslim or this Muslim? Ladies and gentlemen, we must free ourselves from the lie of multiculturalism and we must build our policies based upon the idea of a monocultural multi-ethnic state. It's called the Islamic Did you all hear Ummah. that? A multi Monocultural multi-ethnic state. That means white, black, Hispanics are all welcome in this land. Asians, Africans, Latinos, Slavs, Russians are welcome in this land. But they are welcome based upon our culture and our way of life. That is a Christian response to the refugee and migrant 
British, Arab, ladies and gentlemen, they're all just different. Let's be clear. They're all just different. In Saudi Arabia, only Muslims are welcome. Only Muslims are welcome in Saudi Arabia. The whole world will become Muslim. And notice. Notice what my bigoted, Christophobic no shouted out. He said, all oh, Muslims are equal. Not all people, all Muslims are equal. So that means that the Kukar the unbeliever, the Jew, the Christian, the polytheist, they are all second class citizens. Do not take lectures from Islamists. Ladies and gentlemen, have the courage to recognize that the policies we are following have failed us and are failing us. Ladies and gentlemen, any questions on the topic? Too late. Question. Any questions on topic? Yeah, what's a question? On topic. Like Dimi's argument, you got finished. Muslims are told to look after your Dimi's. Now notice, ladies and gentlemen, the behavior of these two Muslims. Yes. They are a minority, agreed. They don't represent all the Muslims around you. But go and speak to the Christians of Pakistan. Go and speak to the Christians of Egypt. Go. And speak to the Christians of North Nigeria and see how they have been trapped in an Islamic dominated society. An undercover nationalist. No! He says I'm a racist. Yes, you are. He says I'm a nationalist. You're not a Christian. Prove it. Prove it. When you speak, you prove it yourself. What did I prove? Okay. Can I ask you a question? No. Prove it. Prove it. I will prove it. Ladies and gentlemen. Who is Ladies and gentlemen. It's mine, man. It's mine, man. It's mine, man. They get a bit pushy. They get a bit pushy. Yeah? They get a bit pushy. They get a bit pushy. Why are you trying to be scary? Why are you trying to be scary? You push me, 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 because you're interrupting my conversation. You've come here. You've come here yeah. to interrupt my conversation. But don't get on it unless you ask for permission. Don't Fair enough. Fair enough. I apologize. Don't you matters? I apologize. So why did you hit me? You lie. You push me. You try to run me off your feet. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. Nobody hit me. I'll be quiet. What's happened? What's happened? I just got a bit irate. Should we go over there? So there's only two. Yeah, let's go. Violence, eh? That's the next step. That's your next step, isn't it, Luke? You're the one who pushed me. Who is in trouble again, young Bob? I lost my temper a bit. No way. No way. You may be the lady, darling. <sighs> Sorry, are you, are you involved in this as well? I witnessed what happened. Hi. Okay, can we just speak to these two sure, first? Yeah, yeah. Hi, Luca. Can you have some decency and move away from the camera? Shall we move further away? Shall we move no, further no, away? Here. So basically, to, I'll be straight up. Just to let you know, our cameras are recording. That's absolutely yeah, fine. No I got a little irate. I was trying to do a talk. He's interrupted me the last two weeks. And in that 
as I, my temperature rose, I stood on his stool, which was un, which was wrong, and I apologise. Now I'm a bit calm. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop talking. I'll stop talking until he's recorded. Yeah, they're police though. Okay. Yes, they can. And you, Luca. And do not call me darling. He was also in war. Just doing it again. Okay, what happened? He was speaking. That uh, European Muslim guy was speaking. No, he was interrupting. So, excuse Wait, you, you me, he was speaking. Speak. Yeah. Just let you I didn't, I didn't, okay, I didn't finish what I was speaking because much. we got stopped for the Manners. recording okay, right, over there. Okay, let this gentleman finish. Let's be adult about this. Yeah, okay. okay. Quite to be honest, talking. I thought you'd finished as well because then we got interrupted by everyone else. Yeah, yeah. So, let him finish. So, I want to tell the full I story. Think finished as well. So, I want to tell the full story. Guys, can you go away, please? I'll wait until the camera's like adults. Sorry? Why? Sorry? So, I stood on his stool, which, in the heat of the moment, on reflection, I totally accept was wrong, and I apologise to you. I am sorry, I should not have stood on your stool. He punched me there, all right? And, and it will be on some of the cameras at least, okay? He pushed me. I'm old enough to be stabbed, you understand? So is that uh, how he preaches? He, he virtually hit me. All right, and that's what I'm telling you. I'm not lying to you. I must be in some cameras there. Uh, some of the people you said uh, to stay away, they are witnesses to it. All right, and he even pushed one of them, and a European as well. All right. So, for example, when I come here to speak, I don't push people. We Muslims. Oh, no, 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 Where no, you no, 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 no. We, Where you going? We don't want. No, stay over there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we Muslim. We don't want. We don't want. I don't use insulting language, like swear words, whatever. I mean, he's he's been, he's called Bob the Builder. All right. He's been here for a few years. Okay. And I've been here long time before him. All right. Why is it when he's speaking, he's uh, also very aggressive? If when he stepped on my stool and I told him, "Can you get off my stool?" All right. And he punched me. All right, so some of the people who do that, they are banned. Six months, one year. He should be banned as well. Man. Because the law is the same. And I myself, I, I believe in the English law. I've studied part of the English law. And I also went uh, in the 70s on Edgeway Road, applied for the police. Went right up to the last six or seven right. before they told me. Okay. Okay. This is not relevant. Okay. May, okay. may I reply so, to some of those comments? So we've, got both, we've got both versions of what happened. What yeah. are we going to do? What are we going to do about it? Well, you punched me. Yeah. So, come here. Oh. I would got between those two. Oh. This gentleman went to stand on here and he pushed him oh. to move Thank you. this away. I was here and then. Those others all pushing, and I got in between. Now I'm 76 years old, and I want law and order, and I don't want your aggressiveness, and I wouldn't stand up for any aggressiveness yeah. for you. This is a place for debate, not yeah. pushing. Not there are men there who were shouting over him, and it got very heated. But I got in between them. Okay. Now the things to uh, listen to me, please. How long? Be courteous. The police are there. Listen, please. Listen. They've given me chance He's to fine. speak. You, the thing to do now is just call it quits and just go away may I, may and I, leave it, yeah. right? Because yes, I'm a witness that yeah. you yeah. took this okay, from under Okay, you're a witness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Can, okay. Can, may, can I? Your DL, sir. Oh. Can I say yeah. something? Because I'm with my miss, mate, is it all right if I reply? Don't stand on the stool. No, 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 I won't stand on the stool. Okay. So the gentleman, um, as you as you heard from the witness, okay. the gentleman pushed me first, and I'm fully admit I did push back. I put, I got pushed by two people, one to my right, one to my left. I had another guy coming in from the periphery of my vision, and I pushed all three back. I admit that. I'm not denying it. Um, he said that I was using insulting language. This is not true. All I was doing was talking about the fact that Christians are second-class citizens in Saudi Arabia. That is a fact. You can verify it for yourself. It's illegal to be a Christian and citizen in America. If the gentleman thinks that that's insulting, that's obviously a very subjective statement. But I think on balance, if you reflect on that, that's a political statement, not necessarily Okay, I'm not going to go down that road. Okay, that's fine. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. it's all sorted. Okay, 
I'm not going to go after and say that you need to remove the have him removed because he tried to push me off a stool. Right. I'm not saying that you need to do that. I'm not saying that the guy that the other guy that pushed me should be removed either. I've apologised to this gentleman for getting on stool, and I'm apologising also for pushing you. On reflection, I recognise that was wrong. Thank you for apologising. Um, can I just take your details, please? Certainly, but can, can I, I just ask what that is? Is that a little camera? No, no, no. Sorry, that's a microphone that I just didn't take off. It's it's connected to the camera over there. I am very happy to give you my details. I can have a look. Yeah, bear with me. Can I? Um, Yes, but can we please move away from the cameras? Because I know for a fact that these people are going to try and get me. I would love to move away from the camera, sir. Yeah, thank Let's you. Go up here. So I owe you an apology because, in a moment of rashness, I became the topic rather than the gospel, and I'm sorry for that. Um, yeah, I mean, the uncle has interrupted me for the last two weeks, and in a moment of rashness, I decided to do a Mohammed hijab and jump on his stuff. In the same way that Mohammed Hijab and the Salafi thugs in this park jumped on Hatun Tasha's patch, but then all the Muslims defend it when they do it. Um, but nonetheless, it was wrong, and to the uncle, I offer a public apology. Um, but as the camera will show, people pushed me first, and you know, Christians are allowed to defend themselves. At the end of the day, guys, yeah, the topic that we were talking about is the migrant and the refugee crisis. And one thing that I didn't get to say because I got tired of all the hecklers and I lost my temper was the fact that the, um, we've got a problem within our bishops who are just going along with the established narrative of the state along the idea of um, just imitating what the state says about migrants and refugees. And there's three layers to this. What's good for the country, what's good for the migrant and the refugee, and what is good for the church? And the answer to these th things are not the same. What's good for the state and what's good for the church are not necessarily the same thing, especially because we live in a post-Christian society, you know? So as Christians, the thing that we need to advocate is what is good for the church. And that means I owe you an apology for you pushing. I did, I pushed you and I'm sorry. So, and I, and, and I, want, I want you to recognise that I've apologised to all the Muslims that I did wrong to, but not one of them has apologised to me. Just bear that in mind. Remember that they pushed me. Why did you push him? Yeah. push him? Because he pushed me. He did not push Yes, he did. It's on camera. Is it? Yes. Yeah. No, he pushed me. So if you push someone, You're talking about so, in, so in Islam you think it's talking, okay. Let, let, let Islam work. So I'm talking Islam, about your morals. I'm, okay. I'm talking about your morals. Yeah. I'm talking so, about your morals. So what about what, him? Yeah, and you know he, pushed pushed about Islam. he pushed me. He pushed me. He pushed him first. He pushed, pushed him first. It's bro. on camera. It's Listen, on camera. He was. It was he his turn. Me first. It was his turn. Go and look at the film again. It was his turn. Go and look at the film again. Go and look at the film again. You have absolutely no morals. No, you have no morals. You have no because you want to denigrate Christians and Jews to second class. What are you talking about? That's what, no, that's what you the believe Christians in Sharia law. The Romanist, the Romanist no, but you, you want to you make second class Christians, don't you? Killed every no, 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 no. Look at what's happened to the Christians in Pakistan and Syria. How many Christians died? How many Christians and died? You see, the problem is you don't like your narrative being challenged. You don't like your narrative being challenged. Christians, you, you've got to stand up for yourselves. You have to stand up for yourselves. The reality is your middle class, social club, feel-good Christianity is not going to cut it. The reality is that the English, because of their atheism, are a dying breed in this country. Which means their politics with them is a dying breed. And there are many forces trying to fill the vacuum. Islam is one of those forces. The church should seek to be one of those forces filling that vacuum. And you're not going to cut it with your social feel-good Christianity. You've got to have a muscular Christian faith that can speak into the politics, that can speak into economy, that can speak into social norms, can speak into um, cultural norms. And that means you've got to be able to live it. Yeah, the thing is, whilst ever you buy into that liberal ignorance that says 
that, because, that, that Muslims can do no wrong. You're not going to be knowledgeable about what's happening to Christians in Pakistan and Egypt and Syria and Afghanistan and Saudi Arabia. You need to wake up. Wakey, wakey. Okay, that's the wrap up.